Hello again, I'm Dr. Nunez with Living Health. I get the question many times now, what is BMI, Doc? What does it mean to be overweight or obese? What does BMI mean? Is, is it really accurate? Is it useful? So let's get into what BMI is, Body Mass Index. And yes, it is how the uh, statistics are measured for those that are overweight or obese. Uh, and before we get into that, this is, channel is about lifestyle medicine, living health. It is what you can do on a daily basis and how you live your life, the choices you make, so you could be healthier and have a sense of well-being and you can enjoy a long life uh, that's functional and uh, where you can remain engaged as long as possible. These are things that are up to you. That's what lifestyle medicine is about. And we've noticed that lifestyle choices uh, impact something on the order of 80% of chronic disease. If you like these kinds of videos, press that thumbs up, press the subscribe button, press the little bell so you can be notified of future videos and leave a comment. And uh, if there are enough comments about a particular subject, we'll cover that in some other video, hopefully. So body mass index, that is a ratio basically of uh, weight and uh, height. And there are several calculators that you could go out there on the web and you could look at, uh, uh, you could plug in your height and you could plug in your weight and it gives you the body mass index. But let me tell you what the formula is. It's all in the metric system. It's, uh, so it's in meters for your height and kilograms for your weight. So just without getting too much into the math, somebody that is, the, the ratio is your weight in kilograms divided by the square of your height in meters. Okay? So it sounds complicated, but let me, uh, let me show you, let me project uh, an individual that might fit in there for you. So if you have somebody that's like a basketball player, that's, that measures six, seven or six feet, seven inches, more or less, that's two meters. Okay, you square two meters, two times two is four. So that's gonna be your denominator. Now imagine this is a, a center or forward or somebody that's muscular and they weigh 220 pounds. Okay, what is 220 pounds? That's 100 kilograms. Okay, there are 2.2 .2 pounds in each kilogram. So that's your numerator. So you divide that 100 kilograms by four, which is your two meters squared, and you get 25. So think about that. An individual who's about six, seven, and weighs 220 pounds would have a body mass index of 25. So that would be right on that cutoff of what is uh, a normal weight, which is between 19 and 25, what is overweight at 25 up to 30, and beyond 30 is classified as obese. So that's what it is, there's nothing more to it. And that's also the criticism of body mass index because it doesn't take into account, for instance, if you're a bodybuilder. If you're a bodybuilder, is this particularly useful or accurate? Maybe not, because if you, if you look at somebody that is a bodybuilder that's competing uh, as a bodybuilder, their body mass index is likely over 30, but they're not obese, not by other, other standards, okay? So what other things do people look at? Sometimes they say, oh, uh, is that my body fat? No, it is not your body fat. BMI has nothing to do with body fat. And that's the example, okay? You have a bodybuilder and they may have a BMI over 30 or around 30 and they have very low body fat. Again, all it is is that ratio of your height and your, and your weight. That's, that's it. So body fat doesn't go into BMI at all. Now you could have somebody that is uh, uh, around 25 or just over 25 on their body mass index and they do have a large amount of body fat on them that's their makeup or whatever and so 
you may see them uh, have other issues related to their body composition. Measuring body fat. Some, some people want to do that. The easiest and fastest way that you see out there is those scales that have impedance testing. They run a current up your feet. You have to have your socks off when you're measuring this. How accurate that is, it's not the most accurate. The best uh, and most accurate is difficult to find, but they do immerse, immersion. They put you in, in a tank of water and they measure how much you displace when you go into the tank and they do their little calculation of uh, what your body mass would be. There's another way too in an air pod that they stick you in a pod, a body pod, bod, bod pod they call them. And it's similar, but they're measuring how much air you displace in that. And then they do their calculations of, of, your, body, of your body fat. But let's get back to body mass. So what's the significance of this? The significance is this is how they run the statistics on the population and what they're using then to calculate uh, increased risk for diseases like high blood pressure or diabetes that might be related to weight and many other things that are related uh, to weight control. Is it useful? Yes, it's useful. It's one, one more bit of knowledge. Is it the only thing to look at? No, it's not. Um, there, there are other conditions of the, the health of the individual, if they're physically active and functional, uh, that play a role into general health and well-being. And there's also something else that some people have, uh, people have different body types out there. So you, you don't have everybody fitting the same physique or the same body type. And body mass index doesn't take that into account. So what might also be something to look at for yourself? Well, look if you're healthy otherwise. Do you have high blood pressure? Do you have uh, diabetes? Are you pre-diabetic? Do you have cholesterol or triglyceride issues or something like that? Uh, do you have arthritis? Are you carrying a lot of weight on your joints that's maybe contributing to that? How old you are? If you're carrying excess weight as you age, that might not be the ideal thing either. So if you're otherwise healthy and you're functional and the like, well, try to maintain that level of functionality. Even if you're just a little bit on the, on the heavier side, say between that 25 or 30. If you're climbing past 30, perhaps you should start to take a look at that if, if you've typically not been at, at those uh, weight categories. If you are at, at a BMI of 40 or above, that's probably something to look at more intensively and you could discuss your options with your healthcare provider or uh, as to dieting, as to what regime to, to take place to help you get that down. Once you get past those levels of 40, on a BMI, yes, there's a lot of other risks involved and there's also the possibility of sleep apnea as the weight coat goes up like that. And that's another intervention to have. So the other thing to look at is your relative weight, relative to yourself, what the weight you've typically been at when you haven't been dying, dieting and when you've been functioning as an adult for a while. Um, if you're typically been very heavy or a bit heavy and you're around that 30 or between 25 and 30 and that's been where you, you've been at and you start to develop something, whether it's cholesterol or, or a pre-diabetic condition or the like, one of the more useful things that you could try is actually the relative weight that you trim off, say, 10% of, of your body weight, whatever that was over maybe a six month period and see how that works for you. See if you reverse some of these things. If it's for instance, a new high blood pressure that developed as you gained weight, or if it's something that you inched over into a pre-diabetic phase or your cholesterol went up a little bit, sometimes just dropping your weight relative to yourself and that might help. And to do that, well, as we've discussed in other areas, it, it is useful to start to look at consuming foods that are low calorie density. So that means that they have 
uh, a small amount of calories for a volume of food. And typically those are gonna be plants, especially in your vegetable area and, uh, and a lot of your fruits. And some of your beans will fall into that category too. And so you're gonna find that these things have a lot of fiber, have a lot of water in them, and uh, they don't have a lot of calories. So it might be useful for you to go in that route because fiber will help you feel full and just the bulk of what you need to eat to consume a certain amount of calories would be substantial and would be very filling. So that, that's one of the areas to look at. So just going back, body mass, it's not the end all be all, but it's a very important statistic that you're gonna hear a lot of out there. It gets reported in the news and the like. Just put it in perspective. Is it useful? Yes, it's useful. It's not the end all be all. So again, remember, a lot of these things are things that you can handle, that's up to you, the choices you make on a daily basis of what you eat, how active you are, how well you're sleeping, how stressed you are, how connected to your loved ones you are. All these little things compound to form a lifestyle. And uh, if you optimize that, you're gonna feel healthier, you're gonna feel that you're doing well, you're gonna be able to enjoy life and thrive. If any of these little components start to make you frustrated or you're feeling down about yourself, don't beat yourself up over that. Take a step back, look at some of the other pillars that we've discussed in some of the other talks and see where you can tweak things and make adjustments. So again, this is Dr. Nunez with Living Health. If you like these kinds of videos, press that thumbs up, press that subscribe, press the little bell, leave a comment below, and we'll see if we could do a video of something else that might be of interest to, to the, um, the viewers. Again, thank you, and until next time, bye-bye.